What's up guys, it's Apostle Jonathan Baker and I am so excited to welcome you to the Lagoa Life Church YouTube channel. What you are about to hear is a word from God that I am sure is going to bless you, encourage you, and uplift you in your walk with the Lord. Here at Lagoa Life Church, we specialize in relationship over religion, accountability over judgment, and the faith language. What that means in layman's terms is we help people establish their relationship with God and with their peers, while also helping them become accountable in their walk with the Lord. We also help people speak those things that be not as though they were, because faith, in essence, is the way to God's heart. Let's get ready to get into the Word. But before we do that, if you are impacted in any way by this video, be sure to like it and share it with someone else so they too can be blessed by the Word of the Lord. Also, if you'd like to continue to receive content like this from us, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And last but not least, if you are in the Atlanta area, we would love for you to come and worship with us. Every Sunday at 11 a.m., you can find us at 2365 Pleasantdale Road, Atlanta, Georgia, 30340. LagoaLifeChurch.com is in the description box for anyone who's not in the Atlanta area and would like to join the E family. I hope to hear great things from you concerning this word, and I know that it's going to bless you. Shalom in the Lord, yes, you are today. Joshua 5, verse 1, if you're there, say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. I just want to make sure y'all are awake. Amen. It sounds really quiet in here today. Amen. Verse 5, I mean verse 1. So it was when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the west side of the Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we had crossed over that their heart melted. So they say melted. And there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the heel of the foreskins. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. Pay attention. All the people who came out of Egypt who were males, all the men of war had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt. For all the people who came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness to all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed. Because they did not obey the voice of the Lord, to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord had sworn to their fathers that he would give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Then Joshua circumcised their sons whom he raised up in their place. Notice that he, who, what capital letter is there? The capital H. So who's, who's there? Jesus. Come on, somebody. God is there. And he says he raised up in their place for they were uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. So it was when they had finished circumcising all the people that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. I'm ready to teach. Are y'all ready? Amen. That word Gilgal means to roll away. I'm going to go ahead and dive into the text. Amen. I'm not here to bore you. I'm here to teach you something. Somebody say, I'm ready to be taught. I'm ready to be taught. Amen. Now, I know y'all want me to read from the New Living Translation. Amen. But today, I, I feel a strong unction to read from the New King James Version. Because uh, there's some words that I want you to understand in detail. Amen. Uh, verse 1 uh, Joshua chapter 5 uh, lets us know um, it lets us know that the Canaanites the Amorites, all of the enemies of God's people were on the west side of the Jordan and the Bible says that they heard how the Lord had dried up the river in the Jordan uh, this had happened in Joshua chapter uh, 3 and they were the Bible says they had no spirit in them. Now, that word no spirit is not referencing the spirit of a man. It's referencing no uh, courage, no boldness. After they heard what God had did for his people, the enemies of God now lack courage. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. 
And so the Bible says that their heart melted and, and, and their spirit in them no longer because of the children of Israel. And then at that time, notice the Bible says at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. I'm really going to dive into this before we go into it. Now, you know, we're doing a series called He Was... He was there. Who was there? Jesus. Jesus was there. And we're talking about how Jesus was shown in the Old Testament. Now, the reason why this is going to be important for you to know this first part of the passage that I'm in is because there's some things that we often overlook when we read the Bible. If it's not uh, interesting to us, we just bypass it. So circumcision is not something that's interesting to anybody. Amen. Uh, I don't know anybody that's interested in the cutting of the foreskin. However, there's something in this text that you as a believer need to pay attention to. The Bible says that after the enemies of God heard what God had done for his people, Pastor Anthony, their hearts melted within them and their spirit was no longer. And then verse 2 specifically says, Brother Joshua, that at that time, the Lord told Joshua to make something strong, to cut something away. I'm going to speak to you right here. Many of us, when we see God moving on our behalf and silencing the voice of the enemy in our lives, uh, pushing back the enemy of the, the people that's coming against us, we get comfortable and get complacent. You ain't got to say amen, I'm already in the building. This is 2365. And oftentimes when I've discovered, Pastor Anthony, as the, the reason why we become complacent is because we're comfortable when there is no assault. I'm going to teach you right here. Pay attention. Uh, Joshua was told by God that while you got your enemy afraid of you, you need to do something on the inside of you. Jesus, they let me. Uh, you need to circumcise everybody with you because everybody with you is unclean. Can I speak really quickly? The children of Israel are not the enemies of God. The children of Israel are not foreigners. The children of Israel are God's own. But Sister Kwanzaa, God said, even my own they need to get something cut away from them because there's something about them that I don't like. I'm going to speak to you right quick. The reason why we need to hear this clearly is because this is a season where God is circumcising us. Yeah. Oh, yes. Some of you have been getting cut and you think it's the devil. That ain't the devil, it's God. See, you say, God, shape me, mold me, refine me, repair me. And God says, good, let me grab out the scissors. Let me bring out the knife. Let me cut some things away from you that I don't like, but you might. I almost speak to you. The reason why circumcision is so painful is because circumcision is skin that is attached to you. And so, and so in verse number, um, verse number eight, it says, so it was. When they have finished circumcising all the people. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Pastor Anthony. I, I, I'm going to teach my text from away from the text. Uh, the reason why I'm so adamant about you all coming to the prayer meeting is because everybody needs to be circumcised. The reason why I'm adamant about you all participating in the rooms that we started is because you all need to be so. See, the people that are on one accord, they all receive the corporate anointing. I'm finna talk to the same. You know, can I, can I break this down for you? I'm really finna break that religious spirit that has been trailing the young saints, uh, uh, Brother Dixon. I'm gonna really teach right here. What I've seen is that in churches, there were cliques. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me, and that's fine. I'm going to tell you the God on his truth. In church, there were cliques. And the young people couldn't stand it. They grew up and started doing it. Because what you hate, you become like. And so, in church, there were cliques. And in these cliques, everybody that spoke in tongues stuck together. I'm going to teach you something. And everybody that was in the choir stuck together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to teach you something. And everybody that had the same type of job since the choir, they stuck together. I'm going to teach the same. You know, when you found your people, you stuck together. And I'm all for people banding together. But what I'm starting to notice now is that the young people, even in the church, don't stick 
together, even though we all got the same thing coming. We all young and we all love Jesus. But what I've learned is that if we all young, but we don't really love Jesus the way we should love Jesus, then the way I love Jesus may not click with the way you love Jesus. So we in two different clicks based on how we love Jesus. Oh, I'm going to talk to you today. And so, oh, y'all ain't saying Because as many as are led by the they are the so if you're on one accord, the spirit is not in division with Sister Cheryl and against Khalil. No, because what I'm noticing is that if I'm really led by God, I have no problem being connected with the people that even I don't know. Because we all are on one accord. See, y'all don't want to talk to me today. See, I'm going to help y'all today. When the church begins to act as a unit, you'll see the anointing come in as a unit. See, 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 see. There could be more signs and wonders in this house if everybody was more connected. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I know this thing is still it stink real good. I mean, let it bite down. Because I need you to know that God is calling for us to be connected. Not in the same building, but in three different places. See, y'all not listening to me. Uh, Brother Khalil, God is calling for people that will learn how to establish unity even with people they don't know because we all know one person. Pastor Anthony, when I go to other people's churches, I don't go in there and act like I don't know nobody. I go in there and act like I know everybody because we all know the same person. Y'all not listening to me. Y'all not listening to me. Y'all not listening to me. We all have the same father. We all serve the same Lord. We all supposed to have the same spirit. So if I only feel comfortable in my own church building, then what's going on with me? Either they really ain't got the spirit or I don't. I'm going to talk to you. And if I'm in the same church with my fellow brothers and sisters and I don't feel connected, either they ain't got the same spirit or I don't. We need to stop pointing and start looking inward. See, I'm going to teach you something. Because the difference between Joshua and Moses' group is that Joshua dealt with the mess and circumcised and was not allowing what Moses allowed. And if y'all don't want to talk to me today. See, 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 there's some old leaders and some old bishops, Pastor Anthony, that would turn a blind eye to things that the younger men are supposed to deal with. And if the younger pastors do the same thing, you'll see the same result. But as for me and my house, y'all ain't saying nothing to me, we will serve the Lord. This apostle don't turn a blind eye when I see division. This apostle don't turn a blind eye when I see gossip and backbiting. I address it. I rebuke it. I want the devil to come out because I need to make sure that as for me and my house, we don't want to call. Because when we come on one accord, the saints get to see the anointing. And when we don't want to call, more people come to the church. Because guess what's attractive? Holiness. Yeah. Can I help you? I know you can't tweet this point, but this is good for you. Amen. Amen. If you're still awake, say amen. amen. If you still love Jesus, say amen. amen. I'm going to teach y'all today. Glory to God. The Bible says in verse number 8, it says, So it was when they had finished circumcising all the people that they stayed in their places in the camp till they were what? Healed. Till they were what? Healed. Till they were what? Healed. No, no, no. Till they were what? Healed. You see how long it took the saints to say that word? Because that word bothers people that are not healed. I'm going to help the saints. When you're not healed, healing bothers you. Because you understand that healing requires you to go through pain in the process. Yep. Healing is not an overnight sensation. Miracles are instantaneous, but healing takes time. Yes. Wow. Wow. And, and, and when God, are y'all listening to the wow. same spirit that I'm listening to? The Bible says that they cut off the foreskin off of all the people, new generation. But they were not allowed to leave the camp until they were all healed. I'm not sending out the entire church to do a group evangelism until I know you're all healed. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Come on. That's it. I'm not doing no big group function until I realize that we're all healed. Because if I bring the whole church together and five of you got all with one another, you're going to tell the atmosphere I'm trying to set. So no, ain't gonna be no groups till you work out what you need to work in your small group. Oh, Jesus, I'm in the house today. I'm gonna teach the saints if they allow me today. 
And even if they don't allow, I'm still God's man. Look, let me show you something. God wants us to understand that being made whole requires you to go through your healing process. And when you allow God to heal you, then you can be moved out into position. See, everybody in that camp was able to war, but not nobody was able to leave until everybody was healed together. Some of you are trying to war by yourself, and that's why the enemy knocking your head in, because you're not moving in synchronicity with the unit. They can keep, if I send the most skilled marksman out of the entire infantry into the camp by himself against 30 and he's not sniping, I don't care how good he can shoot, he's going to be a dead sniper. Because if I don't see him with his unit, they can't watch his six. Oh, I'm going to teach you today. I, 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 I'm trying to get the saints to understand, Brother Khalil, that moving as a unit. Does, see, you know, when the Holy Ghost takes me away from the tablet, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to get the saints to learn to move as a unit, but moving as a unit don't mean, come here, sons. I, I need to do this. Uh, Dixon, come in. I'm finna do this. I, I feel the Holy Ghost. I didn't plan this illustration, but I see it now. Now, 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 let's just say all three of my spiritual sons right here are, 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 are part of a, are a special forces unit. Come right here, line up right next to me. And, and uh, can y'all see them good? Can, can y'all see? Okay, and let's just say all three of them are skilled at marksmanship. If they point at you, they can pick you off. Let's say that, right? And, and, and let's just say that this one and this one don't like each other, but him and him like each other, and him and him like each other. Let me show you how that works when you go out against the enemy. Now, let's just say, let's say oh, I'm the enemy and he's in the the front, put your gun out, and you're looking, and you're watching, and you're here, and you're behind him, and y'all connected, right? And then he's here, and and, and 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 let's just see you're from the flank, right? Let's just see you're from the flank, right? And you see the enemy sniping over here, and he sees it, but he don't like him. If he does not allow the spirit of unity to override his dislike, he's gonna let him get sniped, and now he ain't got no sick, and he's gonna get Bless you, Brother Trey. How about you, sir? And, and, and y'all sit down. Oh, y'all sit down. And, 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 and so, and so, and so, what I'm seeing now is that in the spirit, that's how many of you are. You let your dislike cause you to be disloyal to what God has called you to. Because what God has called me to is not just a thing, it's people. My purpose involves human beings because I'm a human being. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's it. You want to be called to the pulpit, but the pulpit requires you to preach to people. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> you say you've been called to prophesy, but you don't prophesy to air only. You prophesy to Uh, you say you've been called to the marketplace? Businesses can't thrive without customers. The Erica customers are people. God has called me to sing and dance. Who are you going to sing and dance in front of? Jesus forever? Or you want to sing and dance in front of people to get the people to worship the same person that you look yeah. like? And so this life would disqualify you from your calling. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Now write that down. Dislike will cause you to be disqualified from your calling if it gets in the way of your unity. See, I'm going to tell you, you ain't got to like everybody, but if your dislike makes you disloyal, you have been disqualified. If your dislike makes you dishonorable, it disqualifies you. Oh, they don't like this. If your dislike makes you disobedient to the voice of God when dealing with that particular person, it disqualifies you. I'm trying to help the saints today. Somebody say, God, God help me with my dislike. Help me with my dislike. For real. I need that to pray everything. Help us. Amen. 
So the Bible says in verse number verse number nine, then the Lord said to Joshua after they were all healed, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Watch me. When you're all on one accord, the dishonorable thing that was trailing you gets removed from you. The residue. Because Prophet is big, oh, oh I feel the anointing. Huh? Because all oh, people of God, I'm trying to teach you. They had already been out of Egypt for 40 years. But the residue, the reproach was still on them. The residue. Somebody's in paying attention. Last week I told you, when you allow God to really do what he does, he removes even the residue. Because the residue of the dust will eventually settle into dirt. The reason why the reproach was still remaining is because the people were uncircumcised. They had not allowed God to cut off the excess. And so when they allowed God to cut off the excess and they all were on one accord, God remove something that happened before their time because the generational curses are only allowed to remain when you don't allow God to circumcise you. See, oh, oh, did you? See, the circumcision removes what came up with you, what grew with you, the mindset you adopted from your people, the mindset that was birthed in you, that, oh, I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to speak to you. Many of you are dealing with strong men that have been strong men for centuries in your generation. from 200 years ago are trailing you. Demons don't die. Demons do not die. They live forever. So when you say stuff like, well, I'm shaved now, the curse is gone. Yes, but the curse can be reactivated if you don't allow God to cut off the thing that attracts the curse. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Somebody say lethal attraction. That's what these spirits have to some of you because it's lethal, but they're attracted to the thing you won't cut off. I'm going to talk to you today and you ain't got to like it, but I'm still going to preach. I'm seeing people who love Jesus being destroyed by the devil because they won't cut off that spirit that they like. Oh, Lord Jesus. I, I, I'm not talking about the devil you don't like. Don't nobody like sleep paralysis. Don't nobody like paranoia. Don't nobody. I'm trying to talk to you today. Don't nobody like the but some of you like lust. Some of you like feeling angry. Some of you like holding an office. Some of yeah, I'm in the text now. And that thing that you like is what's keeping the devil in your house. Don't come to the deliverance minister if you're still in bed with the thing you need to get delivered from. Don't ask me to lay hands if you're just going to go back and bring seven more with you. I'm going to talk to you today. Because you know what? I'm, let me tell you something. In 2021, I made a commitment. I said, I'm not wasting my oil on anybody that really don't want the oil. Because, yeah. Cast not your pearls before swine. When you lay in bed with demonic spirits, they're the pigs in the parlor. That's the swamp. I'm going to help y'all if you let me. Somebody say, I need to be circumcised. Amen. Yes, God. Amen. Now, Joshua, Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. After this circumcision, the Bible says, and it, y'all still with me in the text? Y'all still in verse 13? Y'all with me? Joshua 5, y'all there? Say amen. amen. Verse 13, New King James. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, watch this. It says, and it came to pass when Joshua was, was by Jericho. That he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a what? A what? A man. A man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And Joshua, so watch it, verse 14. So he said, capital what? Capital H. He said, no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have not. When 
decision happens, when you allow God to cut out the mess out of you, when you allow God to get rid of the excess out of you, when you allow God to cut off that personality trait that you like but is not profitable for the kingdom, when you ah, then he'll show up to you. Some of you say, why well, I ain't have no encounter with God? Because the things that you like is hindering him from showing up. Oh, my God. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. The Bible says that after they got circumcised, Oh, Jesus, we in here now, Pastor Joshua. It came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho. Watch him. He's right by his next assignment. He's right by his next assignment. You want God to encounter you? You need to get rid of the last season you were in. Stop dwelling in the thing of old and go ahead and walk in the new. <laughs> that he lifted his eyes and looked and behold a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, watch the boldness. He went to him. He went to him with a sword in his hand, but Joshua is a man of war himself. So he rose up on the man. And he said, Behold, are you for us or for our adversaries? Notice what the Bible says. Jesus said, No. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you. Verse 14 says, And Joshua fell on his face to the earth. And what? He what? And said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot for the place where you stand is holy and Joshua did so. I'm sorry, God already told me I needed to take these off when I preached this thing. I'm going to just let you know. And so the Bible shows me the word man here is the same Hebrew word Adam. If you were here last week, you know what's going on. And this is the same word that was used in Genesis 32 when Jacob wrestled with the Man. Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I love the Hebrew and the Greek translators. I love how we find that the word Adam is used here the same way it's used in Genesis 32. Meaning that if Jacob wrestled with Jesus, then Joshua must have been looking at <laughs> watch me, watch me, watch me. Somebody say he was there. He was there. Watch me, write this down. Circumcision must go forth because before God reveals himself. Write it down. Circumcision must go forth before God reveals himself. I'm not talking about in the physical. I'm talking about in the spirit. I got to go here. Oh, I got to go here. My, 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 my. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Can I help y'all? Can, can I help y'all? Yes. I got to put it up for you. I got to put it up for you. Yes. Romans 2, go there right now. Romans 2, go there right now. Yes. Oh, yes, Lord. We say yes to you. We say yes to you. We say yes to you. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, somebody. You know what? I'm going to tell you Romans chapter 2, verse 29 in the TPT, the Passion Translation. I want you to understand deep what this thing is saying to you. Let's go Verse 29, what's it say? But, verse 29, Romans 2, verse 29. It says, but you are Jewish because of the inward act 
of spiritual circumcision, a radical what kind? A radical what? Change. That lays bare your heart. Oh yes. Oh yes. What kind of change? Radical. What kind of change? Radical. What kind of circumcision? Wait, what kind of circumcision? Spiritual. But what kind of change? Radical. In other words, if Jesus is really doing a work on the inside of you, you shouldn't stay the same. Some of the saints can't walk in the oil because they want to stay the same person and just slap Jesus on their personality. But who you really are is who God called you to be, so who you've been is not who God... They're going to get it on Wednesday. The radical change has to commit in order for us to see the new fruit that lets us know you've been spiritually circumcised. Because the old you is not profitable for the kingdom, but the new you is. I'm going to talk to you right here. The Bible says it's a radical change that lays bare your heart. It's not by the principle of law, but by power of the who? Holy by the power of the who? Holy for then your praise will not come from people, but from God himself. My, 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 my. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. So, now let's go back. Let's go back to Joshua. So, 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 so. Joshua and his people were circumcised. And then God revealed himself in person. The flesh, the excess flesh was removed. And God should do. Watch me. Circumcision signifies purity. Circumcision equals purity. Watch me. I know they're not ready for this. Sifting helps circumcise you before your next level of glory. Mm -hmm. It's quiet, I know. Nobody likes the sifting process. Everybody likes the glory. But in order to get the next dimension of glory, you have to be sifted. Because God does not reveal himself in a greater capacity until you have removed something that was hindering you. Can I be real with you? The thing God may have allowed you to get away with two years ago, he won't allow you to do two years from then. It's called growth. How do you say Grow. <laughs> right. Some of you need to grow. You're sad. Y'all forgot I'm a prophet again? No. Oh, y'all see. I see an event. Some of you are stag Your stagnation is hindering your success. Some of you have got to the place where you love Jesus, but he's looking for you to show him. Amen. Amen. Raise your hands. Just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will release a different level of love to them. That they will love you not just with their lips, but also with their actions. May we not be a people that is close to you with their lips, but their heart be far from you. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will be a people who draws near to you with our sails, not just with our mouth. I pray that we would draw near to you with the way we speak to one another, not just with the way we speak to ourselves or speak to the people we like. I pray in the name of Jesus that we would draw nigh unto you with the way we read our word, not just the way we read on Sunday. I pray that we would draw near unto you with the way we pray during the week, not just the way we receive prayer at the pulpit. I pray that we would be a people who is holy and pure before you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen. I felt led to pray that right then. My God. In Joshua 5.14, the Bible says, when Je uh, Joshua 5.14 in the NIV actually is where I want to go. I, I want to go there. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to go there. So, in the NIV, let's see. Notice he said, neither. He replied, Amen. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. I'm going to break this down to you. You might want to write this down. When heaven comes to see about you, there's a few reasons why they come. 
When heaven comes to see about you, there's a few reasons why they come. I'm going to give you five. Number one, they come to give instructions. They come to give instructions. Number two, they come to wage war on your behalf. They come to wage war on your behalf. Number three, they come to see, pay attention, they come to see if the cry of oppression or the cry of wickedness is as it appears to be. Do y'all remember in Genesis when Abraham heard the Lord speaking to him and he said, I've come to see if the cry that has erupted from Sodom and Gomorrah is as wicked as it sounds. Yeah. Sorry. Amen. You have to be able to know that whatever is going on in the world, God does not turn a blind eye nor a deaf ear to. He hears and sees and he sends his ministering angels to come see about it. So when heaven comes to see about you, sometimes they're coming to hear and see what's going on in your life. Amen? Amen? Number four, they come to give divine revelation. When heaven comes to see about you, it comes to give divine revelation. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, they come to activate something within you. They come to activate something within you. When heaven comes to see about you, they come to give instruction, to give wage war on your behalf, to see if the cry of oppression or the cry of wickedness is as it appears to be. They come to give divine revelation or they come to activate something within you now. Notice in Joshua 5 verse 14b, Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, Jesus, what does my Lord say to his servant? I'm gonna tell you what that worship word means in the Hebrew here. It is the word shakah. S-H-A-C-H-A-H. S-H-A-C-H-A-H. Shakah. And it means to lay prostrate, bow down, fall down flat, worship, humbly, reverence. Amen. So when God revealed himself to Joshua. Joshua fell on his face prostrate as an act of worship unto God. He fell on his face. People of God, God has given me something to share with you. When God reveals himself to you on a deeper level, even if you're receiving a fresh understanding of who he is in church or in a prayer meeting or wherever the case may be, when you feel the presence of God, do not allow pride to keep you from receiving what you need from heaven. Yeah, Are you listening to me? So it's amen. amen. Because I've noticed that sometimes, you know why the men of God don't always receive the fullness of God the way they should? Because we worried about looking macho in front of everybody. I'm telling you what I know. I know some men of God who could be way more powerful than they are, but they won't bow their knee in front of people. They won't lay on the floor in front of people. They definitely won't cry in front of people. And they sometimes won't even lift their hands in front of people. And that's what's keeping them from receiving the fullness of God. Whereas the women, they will lose it all. <laughs> you know? <laughs> women are crying. Now, some women have gotten prideful too. Yeah. This new generation of women has gotten prideful too. I watched it. The new women are like, I ain't going to mess up my makeup. Ah. No, I see it. The devil is lying. I see some women be like, well, I ain't going to get down because, you know. Mm -mm. You're doing this. Yeah. But when you was in the club, you would twerk. You know, now we can't even bind into the. You know, it's funny. It's very funny to me. Anyways, what I'm seeing though is God is showing me that this God should be your heart posture. When God shows up before you, you should bow before Him. You should worship. You can get prostrate. You should humble yourself and reverence God. Listen to me, S H A C H A H, Shaka. That's what the word worship means here in this text. Now, verse 15 says, Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 5, God said, 
Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. Watch me. Moses was told these words. Then Joshua was told these words. And God spoke to me and let me know that Jesus was giving him a mantle of deliverance. Like Moses had. Because God revealed himself to Moses before Moses entered into Egypt. And God revealed himself to Joshua before Joshua entered into Jericho. But y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Maybe some of y'all ain't excited about mentors. But I am. I'm When you learn to bow before the king of kings who distributes the mantles, you'll receive a mantle you ain't even got to stand in line for. I'll talk to you. Some of you are running to the altar when the mighty men and women of God from other churches come to lay hands and come to prophesy and come to pray. But if you learn how to lay before God the way you run to the altar before me, you can... You can get the mental that God has specifically for you. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get the mental God got for me. You, you understand what I'm saying? Can I help you really quickly? Notice Moses received the mantle, then went and delivered people out of Egypt. Joshua received the mantle and helped the children of Israel go through Canaan. Watch me, watch me. But the key to Joshua receiving was his submission. I'm gonna teach you. Because the Bible says that Joshua was Moses' assistant or his aide or his armor bearer since he was a youth. Yeah. I'm going to teach the sense. And wherever Moses went, Joshua went. Can I help you? When Moses entered into the holies of... My God. I'm sorry, I get excited about the word of God. It's a life source for me, you know. When, 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 when he went into the tabernacle, the Bible says that when he would exit, Joshua would still be in there. Y'all yeah, not listening to me. Y'all not listening to me. Y'all not listening to me. If you know what I know, when your leader is on the floor before God, you ought to be on the floor too. If your leader bows their knee, you ought to bow with him. If you... If your leader gets to speaking in tongues, if you got your tongues, you ought to pray with them. If your leader says, I rebuke it in the name of it, you ought to say in the name with it. Because, ah, because I learned that whatever the head carry, I get it. And if I know where I'm supposed to be, I'm going to get everything they get. And when they leave out of the face of God, I'm going to stay a little longer. Because I'm trying to pick up whatever was left behind. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You see, you see. The Bible specifically said, I got to show them because they not. I got to show you biblically. I, I, ah, ha, 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 ha. Ah, I'm trying to help. Oh, Lord, I'm trying to help the saints. My, 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 my. Can, can I help you really quickly? Are y'all ready to study? Y'all ready to see what the word of God said? Come on, let me, let me show you what the word of God said. My, 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 my. Ha. My, 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 my. My, my, my. Come on, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Watch me. Yes, Exodus. Chapter 33, verse number 11. Exodus chapter 33, verse number 11. When you're there, say amen. amen. The Bible says, so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not from the tabernacle. Wow. Wow. <laughs> when the young people learn how to tarry in the face of God, boy, Jericho's would come down all over the place. When uh, I'm, see, I'm trying to help the saints. Uh, if you never listen to nothing else I say, young people, you got to learn how to stay in the presence of God a little while longer. So it's not like, like, can I help you? Y'all be on Instagram live for an hour and some change. Y'all be watching Netflix series for four, five hours. Y'all be playing 2K for four, five, six, eight hours. Y'all y'all don't want to talk to me. See, I'm going to get you today. I'm on your tail today. When you find a show you like, you pitch it. When you find a page you like, you stay on it. When when you find yourself engrossed in TikTok, you keep scrolling. It's, it, it's only a couple seconds. You got to get the next one. See, mm, 
But when I say, come on, let's pray in the prayer meeting, the saints don't be around. Why? Because you like TikTok more than you like prayer. And it's okay, but when the devil comes, let's see if TikTok can get him out. See, I'm going to show you something today. No, y'all don't have to like me and I don't care. See, I'm one of them Christians that really believes that in order to receive power, you got to pray. In order to receive the anointing, you got to tarry a while. I'm one of them Christians that believe that you can't have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof and think the devil gonna run when you say in the name of Jesus. I'm one of them Christians that believe if I really want to see God show up, I gotta show up wherever God at. And if God in my prayer church prayer meeting, I'm gonna be at the prayer meeting. If God at the fasting thing, I'm gonna be where they fasting at. If God in the deliverance session, I'm gonna be right behind them catching, praying, praying in tongues, laying, whatever you ask me to do, I'm with it. Why? Because I understand something that the young people don't got. I follow what I so because they followed Christ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people want to be like their favorite social influencers. Whatever they see on YouTube. I'm telling you, man, God wants to do something different with this generation, but we're really not ready. I'm speaking as a prophet of God to you. We really not ready. There's some of you that are tapped in, but the majority of the generation is not tapped in. And we go, we're going to see the greatest revival we've ever seen. How? Who going to carry it? Jesus. Where the Smith Wigglesworths at? Where, where the Catherine Coolmans? Huh? Everybody want to be like her. Where's she at though? Do you have the ability to do what they did? What I read about Smith Wigglesworth and heard about Smith Wigglesworth is that he wouldn't even go 30 minutes without picking up the Bible. Oh my. If 30 minutes went by and he hadn't read something, he picked up the Bible and read something just to refresh his spirit. Y'all ain't listening to me. But y'all want to carry the oil of Smith and don't even do the anointing in the morning. You won't even read. I'm trying to A church like Bishop Jakes. I don't know what Bishop Jakes did to get there, but I know he didn't play around in the radio in the morning. I know he was in the face of God. Y'all yeah. not listening to me. People want a big ministry and want to see God advance. They following it. Sit out and do all these things, but are you willing to sacrifice what you like to get what you need? See the oh my god, the calling alone don't carry enough oil for you. You gotta do something. I'm going to teach you real quick if you allow me. I'm going to teach you. See, 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 see. If it was based on what someone deserves, then Esau should have seen God. But he didn't. The trickster did. Because the trickster did something Esau weren't willing to do. Esau thought he was going to receive the blessing of God because of his birthright. But Jacob knew he wasn't going to get it, so he did something different. He was going to find his way to the blessing no matter what it took. Oh, my, 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 my. And God said, I'm going to show up. Because this dude got a different level of hunger than Esau don't got. And then God changed his whole name. The birthright alone don't carry oil. You got to activate the birthright. Oh, my God. Come on. Mm -hmm. Time to activate it. Woo. Time to activate it. Time to activate it. It's time to activate Can I really teach my church? Yes, teach us, please. please I'm trying to help you. No, come on. Young people. Most of y'all in here young people. And I say young because you're not really old. Even the oldest people I got ain't old, to be honest. You understand? So let me explain this to you. God spoke to me. God said, my church must be a place of worship. Yes. That's it. I've been offline. I promise you, I've been tapped in. God been speaking to me. He said, my church need to learn how to worship. They don't know how to worship. And he said, I'm not just talking about the music. He said, I'm talking about their life. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Like me preaching good to you is good, but if you're not receiving and understanding, what matters? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like you got to learn how to really allow yourself to be a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service that at least you could do. See, I'm my, 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 See, there's many as are led, Brother Khalil, by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Meaning, it's possible to hear God but not be led by Him. Being led means you start walking. He can tell you a thing, but did you start walking in it? Oh, I'm going to talk to you. And, and, and it can, when you don't see it happen right away, do you stop walking or do you keep walking? Mm. Because the 
thing that he promised, he is sure to complete in you. But he can't complete it unless you get to the end. See, completion does not take place unless I finish. And many of you are stopping mid-travel and saying, God, I ain't see it yet. Why? Because you ain't got to the end of the thing yet. You, no, I'm going to teach you today. Young people, we are in an instant gratification era where if it don't happen right away, we done with it. That mentality is crippling the people of God. You, you, I'm, I'm sorry, but you can I can I really help you? I was teaching my pastors overseas. I, I was training them, and I was explaining to them that the Bible clearly states in the Gospels when Jesus gave the parable of the seed of the soil. He let them know. He said that some of the seed fell on stony ground, and it immediately sprang up because it had no root. And a lot of these churches and these platforms, they're springing up and they're successful because they don't got no root. But the minute that the devil comes, they gonna wither away because they're not rooted and grounded in God. Y'all not listening to me, and y'all looking for quick. Fast, easy going, a revelation, easy going, anointing, easy going, church service, fast revival, fast membership. That's not realistic if you really root it. Yeah. 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 It takes time and all hands on deck. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Are you listening to me? Say amen. Yeah. This, this is. I'm sorry, I'm trying, I mean, I really am, but I close this laptop down and go rain my only. You understand? Like, you understand what I'm saying? I don't care about none of that. Because to be real with you, the truth of the matter is, we need more rhema teaching. Anybody can teach out the text, and I'm not saying my text is wrong. What God gave me is what I need to give you. But at this very moment, I'm getting a rhema word from God, and the rhema word is we need to tighten up. Sister Parza, you know, I, I, I be trying to like, nah, it's going to get it. God said, no, the saints got to tighten it up. Because listen, the difference between anybody's church and the Acts church is what the Acts church did. Yeah, yeah. The Acts church sacrificed. The Acts church was persecuted. They don't write that part down. Y'all like that part. The Acts church was on the run and still preaching the gospel. My God, I don't know what Bible they reading with me. In Acts, in Acts chapter 6, it said that evangelist Philip, before he began to evangelize and start casting out devils, they was literally on the run. And the Bible says that they told about Jesus wherever they were dispersed to. We in the comforts of our backyard, ain't even under heavy fire yet, and can't even tell the next door neighbor about Jesus. You know, some of you for homework should go study the lives of the ones that went before us in the faith. You'll learn something. Follow them as they follow Christ. Because I'm telling you, like, the different lifestyles that they had is completely different. like night and day from this modern generation. I'm telling you. And the generals are dying off, y'all. Who's going to get promoted? Only the ones who have clean hands and a pure heart. Are you listening to me? You don't get promoted because ain't nobody left to lead. God will lead it by himself. And when he put a man in... Jesus. I'm going to be real with you. God don't need you. He wants you. Understand? Yeah. Don't make him regret his... Dis Like, I'm in the vein of the spirit now. I'm telling you, somebody better put the audio recording on this part. Listen, and then play it back later. Cause when you go to intercede, you need to intercede for against the spirit of lethargy in the church. You need to come against the spirit of complacency in the church. You need to come against that common spirit where it treats the things of God as the things of men. You, you, ah, God is calling for a sacred church Not a church that plays with you God says I'm not interested in playing with you God says I need you To put me where I deserve to be Or I'll walk out the building Don't play with God He's not interested in playing with you Some of you are receiving a rebuke in this moment from God because he's been telling you this and you keep ignoring it. Stop playing with God. He's not interested in playing with you. Lip service means nothing to him.
my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me you know what he said okay following requires you to get out of your seat start walking where he's leading following requires you to get out of bed get on your knees and read that bible following requires you to get out of the gaming chair and go put on the worship music and begin to consecrate following means to stop eating out and budget like he told you and maybe you should go on a fast it'll also help your finances as well as your spirit god is speaking in here you hear me i'm not asking you do you hear me because God is speaking in here and he's looking for a holy church, a remnant church. The remnant carries revival in their loins, not just any Christian. The, the remnant carries revival in their loins.